Hi, and welcome back. I made a video about LCR mixing a while back, and there were a couple of common types of responses. Some people seemed to get angry, as if I were criticising their mixing skills. I dealt with that in a follow-up video. But another common response was, who listens in mono these days? Actually, you'd be surprised. Mono Bluetooth speakers are quite popular, I gather. There is one thing we can perhaps safely conclude, however. People listening in mono probably don't care about audio fidelity. They just want to hear the song. That's why when I do my mono check, my concern is that the song still holds up, which usually just means that the vocal is still up front and properly supported by exciting stuff behind it. But of course, you're perfectly entitled to decide to simply not care about people who listen in mono. It's your call at the end of the day. However, there is another problem with LCR mixing. That's nothing to do with mono compatibility. Binaural compatibility. Because headphones and earbuds are not, strictly speaking, stereo. With stereo playback, both ears hear both speakers. But your right ear hears the left channel slightly delayed and filtered by your head. Binaural playback, by contrast, pipes each channel directly into the corresponding ear and those phase differences you were hearing in stereo are gone. Now, you can argue with me about semantics and say that the word stereo has just come to mean two audio channels and that to insist on calling headphones binaural is overly pedantic. And you might have a point. But my point is, whatever you call it, listening to those two signals via a spaced pair of speakers doesn't provide the same experience as piping each channel directly into each ear. Hard panning a signal for stereo playback is fine. The sound will seem to come from that speaker, just as if the musician were placed at that point in the room. But hard panning a signal for binaural playback is a very different thing. Now we have a signal present in one ear that's simply not there at all in the other, which is something that never really happens in real life. It sounds a bit weird and unnatural. So let's imagine we have an LCR mix. In case you're in any doubt, LCR in this context means an approach to mixing in which every element is either panned straight down the middle, like the drums, percussion and bass here, or hard panned left or right, like these guitar parts. Yes, this is a guitar part. Let me know in the comments if you want me to show you how I created this effect. Let's assume that we're happy with this mix in stereo and also in mono, either because we've checked it and it's fine or because we've decided not to care about mono. But then you try it on headphones and it sucks. Of course, sucks is a subjective judgment. You might really like that unnatural hard pan sound in binaural and I can't argue with you if you do. But personally, I usually don't. Fortunately, however, there are some really easy ways to fix the problem. And as a bonus, these tricks might also give your mix extra depth and space in stereo as well. If we look at the mix with span, it's easy to see that the hard panned elements have no low frequency content. There's basically nothing below about 200 hertz in the side channel, which shows up in orange here. So when I enable this high pass filter on the master channel, set to 150 hertz, and only affecting the side channel, we shouldn't hear any difference, right? Now, this is the point where I should probably tell you to plug in headphones or earbuds or cast the video onto a device with stereo speakers, but I'm not going to do that. The techniques I'm showing you here are really simple and easy to try out in your own mixes, whatever DAW you're using. So if you want to watch this on a mono phone, then have a go yourself when you're in your studio. That's fine. Just be aware you literally won't be able to hear any of the differences I'm talking about. Okay, so let's try toggling this high pass filter on and off. Then I can clearly hear a difference. The space the parts are in seems to change when I switch in the filter. Can you hear that? Let's try it with just one of the hard-panned elements. And while watching the meters, 
With the filter bypassed, this part is only in the right channel, and the left channel is silent. But not so with the filter switched in. Now the signal is apparently no longer hard panned. What's going on here? Let's go back to first principles. If a signal is panned centrally, so equal amounts in the left and right channels, it will appear only in the mid channel after encoding to mid side, and there will be nothing in the side channel. However, if a signal is hard panned left, then after encoding, that signal will be equally present in the mid and side channels. And if a signal is panned hard right, it will end up equal and opposite in the mid and side channels. While intuitively you might expect a hard pan signal to appear only in the side channel, in fact that's not the case. Stuff that's only in the side channel will disappear completely in mono, and might seem like it's coming from somewhere behind you in stereo. But hard panned means equal in the mid and side channels, or equal and opposite. So hard pan signals are dramatically affected if you introduce phase differences between mid and side. And of course, this high pass filter is minimum phase, so it's creating significant phase shift around the cutoff frequency. This is why you do need to be a bit careful about routinely monoing the bass of your mix with a side channel high pass filter, as it can change your stereo image. In this case, with hard pan signals, I tend to prefer the high pass version, especially on headphones. But if you've already carefully crafted the stereo image, with tasteful and carefully applied phase differences, you might not want to mess all that up by slapping on a high pass filter without listening carefully to how it changes the sound. If it doesn't improve matters, but you still feel the need to reduce the level of the bass in the side channel, you can just switch to linear phase mode. Now switching the filter in and out makes no audible difference at all. However, now we've established that phase differences will do interesting things to our stereo image, we find we have lots of ways to exploit that. Let's try a simple one, using a free plugin. This is a simple utility delay plugin, which seems to be aimed at tasks like manual time alignment. For example, you could measure the distance from your spot mics to your main array and switch the units to meters instead of milliseconds so you can input those measurements without having to convert manually. Considered as a delay effect, it doesn't seem to offer many creative options. It doesn't even offer any feedback. But oh, this is so wrong. I'm going to switch the routing to the mid side preset. But now, any delay I dial in will only be applied to the mid channel. And as we all know, delay always means phase shift. So how much delay do you think I should try? One millisecond seems like a pretty conservative starting point, right? Wow. This might be the most profound difference from the smallest change that I've yet to discover. With the delay switched in, we almost completely lose any sense that the parts are panned left and right. But the width has been replaced by a profound sense of depth instead. In truth, one milliseconds is way more than I'd usually use. I'm more likely to go with a tenth of a millisecond. Maybe up to three tenths at most. This still makes a really profound difference when listening in stereo. But it adds depth without entirely removing the left to right placement of parts. But you can go subtler too if you want. Adding a tiny amount, like two hundredths of a millisecond, will hardly make any difference when listening in stereo. If you're really happy with your hard panned LCR mix in stereo, you'll likely be just as happy with a 200th of a millisecond delay added to the mid channel. But this still makes a noticeable difference to binaural playback. 
That weird sense that the part you're hearing in your left ear is really tiny and actually inside your ear canal disappears when it suddenly seems to be coming from outside your head. And as a bonus, this really useful little trick is available in about three clicks from a free plugin that will run in any DAW. Okay, let's try another example. This is Slick EQ Gentleman's Edition from Tokyo Dawn and Variety of Sound. The feature we're interested in is this little button here, which unfortunately isn't available in the free version. But its bigger brother is not expensive and has other advantages as well. But first of all, let's set the stereo processing mode to SUM, which is just another way of saying mid-channel only. And let's try turning on this mysterious little option. That's just as dramatic a difference as when I delayed the mid-channel, to my ears at least. Because this button enables a group delay for the low frequencies. In other words, it's delay again, but this time more for the low frequencies than the high frequencies. We can tune the effect with the frequency knob. Turning it right up kills the stereo effect, just as completely as a full millisecond of overall delay but with a different kind of depth added instead. Tuning it lower is probably a safer bet in most cases. Though, even all the way down, that difference still seems really significant to me. A word of warning, however. Running this on the full mix means we're also affecting the mid-panned bass and percussion elements. This kind of phase rotation effect can be strangely unpredictable. Sometimes it makes the low end sound better, sometimes worse, sometimes just different, and sometimes you might not hear any difference at all. It totally depends on the source material, and the only way to find out is to try it. In this case, I've no objections to the effect on the mid-panned elements, but if you do, you have a couple of options. Perhaps the simplest is to switch the processing to the difference channel instead, which is just another name for the side channel. This creates just as much phase difference between mid and side as processing the mid channel instead. But we're now rotating the phase of the difference signal instead, and the mid panned elements are totally unaffected. Of course, this would also be possible with the simple delay as well. Simply reset the mid channel to zero, then switch to the side and dial in the delay there instead. Phase shifting the sides instead has a very similar effect. But it's different somehow. And for reasons I don't entirely understand at the moment, I always seem to prefer it when I futz with the mid-channel phase instead. So in that case, you can simply stick your hard panned elements in a subgroup without the drums and bass, and screw around with the mid-channel phase on that subgroup instead of the master. Okay, last trick. This is Reaper flavoured, but you should be able to do most of it with free or stock plugins in any DAW. I've got a chain of three plugins the JS Midside Encoder, followed by a Re EQ, then a JS Midside Decoder. The Re EQ is therefore processing the mid and side channels rather than left and right. And actually, in most cases, that wouldn't make any difference. But I'm also going to open up the pin connector and remove the routing for channel 2. Now the EQ is only processing the mid-channel. So if I add an all-pass filter, we're now shifting the phase of just the mid-channel. You'll probably want to turn on the phase display to see that phase shift displayed on the graph. If I shift the phase of the low frequencies with a wide and gentle bandwidth, we can get something similar to the effect I got from Slick EQ's phase rotation. But if I shift the phase of the high frequencies instead, this is more like delaying the mid-channel by a tiny amount. But of course, this is Reaper, which means I can modulate these parameters. Let's have some random modulation of the frequency parameter. And why not the bandwidth as well? 
and now my hard panned elements are chasing each other around a three-dimensional space. Instead of just sitting there, boring the hard panned. People talk a lot about how to get their mixes sounding wide, but honestly that's kind of easy. Way more impressive, in my opinion, to have a mix with depth. That's a much more compelling and mesmerising illusion, at least to my ears. And it turns out that's easy too. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.